So as we continue our discussion on community ecology, we're going to be now looking at a new topic called species diversity. And this is a major topic in the study of community ecology because we have to understand and appreciate the fact that many species will be present within a community. And we have to understand why, how, and what is going to cause this diversity specifically. And that's what a community ecologist loves to look at. And we're going to be seeing the components and factors that add on and give us the diversity of species that we see within a community. We're going to first define species diversity as the following. So we'll put a definition on the side here just to work off of. This is going to be the variety of different kinds of organisms. So this is the key here. It's a variety of different kinds of organisms. And this variety of different kinds of organisms is going to be those that make up a community because we are talking about community ecology and C-O-M-M -M for community. So very simple definition, very clear definition to understand the diversity of species within a community's boundaries. Now there are a couple of components that make up species diversity. We'll start with the first component which can be considered species richness. So we'll write this down as species richness so that's our first component of study when we're looking at a species diversity within a population, within a community. And so when we see species diversity, we would define species richness, we define this as the number of different species, number of different species, and why different species? Well, of course, we are looking at different kinds of organisms, so different kinds of species, number of different species that live within a community. So this is a true number that we see within a community. And that's the key here. We get a, a hardcore number to work off of. A basic idea to understand about species rich, richness can be really driven home by looking at two extreme examples of different types of species richness. If we look at the example of the rainforest, and then we compare that example to, let's say, a mountaintop, we're going to have two distinct and quite different levels of species richness, different levels of the numbers of different species that live within a community. In the rainforest, we have, as expected, a high species richness. This is simply because there's an abundant amount of resources, there's an abundant amount of rain, let's say, abundant amount of space and trees and many different things within the rainforest that gives us this high species richness. What about on a mountaintop? On a mountaintop, there's much less of everything that we just said, and thus we would expect, just like we would think as a community ecologist, low species species richness at this much more uh, contrived area, this mountaintop. It's a much more difficult to figure out the species richness or even have it in the first place because of the environmental constrictions. So this is our idea of species richness. Another component of species diversity is known as relative abundance, and we'll do that right here. Relative abundance. This is another thing you have to take into factor uh, when you are thinking of the species diversity that you see within a community. So relative abundance is specifically just the idea of species evenness. How much a species is distributed, let's say, within a, popu within a community. So relative abundance is species evenness, and we can say that it simply refers to the proportion refers to proportion of each species. So do we have a large proportion of one species and a small proportion of another? Do we have an equally large proportion of all species? Is our evenness quite uh, even, let's say? Or is our evenness much more dispersed in terms of the relative abundance that we see? Do we see a lot of species A and a little bit of species B and some of species C? Or is it more equally uh, distributed or relatively abundant within the community. So we have two factors that are important so far in establishing species diversity and we take both of these into account when we finally look at the idea of species diversity specifically through something known as the Shannon Diversity Index. This is going to give us a really nice quantitative 
uh, factor for diversity within a community. The Shannon Diversity Index often is simply abbreviated as a letter capital H. In this uh, Shannon Diversity Index, we are going to be able to, and with this, we can compare, we use this and it compares the diversity of communities over time and space. So of comes over time and space because that's how communities interact with each other over time and over space and we can compare how diverse they are with each other by referencing the Shannon Diversity Index as letter H. Now this Shannon Diversity Index is not simply this statement right here, this qualitative uh, descriptive statement, it's actually much more quantitative and we can state that the H uh, of a population let's say is going to be equal to an equation that's going to give us the Shannon Diversity Index. And that would be uh, P sub A natural log of A. Don't worry about this natural log just yet. And then let's say P sub B natural log of sub B. And then we'll do even P sub C natural log of that C. And so forth and so forth and so forth. We can do D, E, F, G, all we need to do is continue this down the line letters. So what does all these, these terms mean? Let's look at them. Um, a, B, and C simply refer to, so A, B, C, dot, 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 whatever you want to continue up to, simply refer to species in the community. So all the species in the community, we have species A, we have species B, we have species C, all of these things will, will directly influence diversity and thus will be a part of the Shannon Diversity Index. Okay, so we've got those little letters covered. What about P? P is equal to the relative abundance of each species, a concept that we established previously in this relative abundance section. So we're going to obviously utilize that knowledge and say that P stands for the relative abundance of each species, and this time we're only referring to one single species. In addition, LN simply stands for natural log. It's a mathematical uh, use, a uh, mathematical tool that we can use to really figure out this index, this H value. And finally, we can say that, um, and I'm just going to put this down over here, if we have a high H value, we equate that to having a high diversity of species in the community. High diversity of species in community. Very simple idea through the Shannon Diversity Index to give us a nice quantitative value for this letter H, the Shannon Diversity Index, utilizing the ideas of species richness and relative abundance, um, just like we've already established. And finally, the last thing that we're going to look at about species diversity will be done down here, and that will be the idea of community stability. So we're, of course, always going to go back to this idea of community because this is about community ecology. And specifically, we're now focusing on the stability scene here. Namely, we're going to ask ourselves this final question. Does diversity affect stability? Does it affect the way that a community works, succeeds, not succeed, has difficulty, evolves? All of these effects are a part of stability, of part of living. Is diversity a part of this effect? Will it have any effect? And what we notice is the following, and it's a powerful final point that we can say. The higher the H value that we see within communities, so higher H communities are the following. Dot, dot, dot. Higher H, meaning well diverse, really high diverse communities are usually going to be, um, and I'm just going to put this over here, they're going to be more productive. This is all done through experimental procedures that we've already established. They will make more biomass. So I'll say make more biomass. Biomass simply refers to the weight of all living organisms, thus there will simply be more living organisms. They will be better able to withstand environmental stress, better able to, that says withstand, E-N-V, stress, 
These are all calculated, well-established ideas related to higher H, and they will also be, one final point, more resistant to what we call invas invasive species. More resistant to invasive species. These are species that notoriously enter a community and take over that community without any regard to the other species. This community stability will be quite high so long as the diversity is high and if that happens we get more productive communities, more biomass, better able to withstand the environment and more resistant to those annoying pesky invasive species. And that un concludes our understanding of species diversity, understand the richness, the abundance, and how it plays a role in the Shannon Diversity Index.